if you want to be productive, creative, and minimize your levels of stress, you must have a workspace that supports you. In this video, we will discuss feng shui and environmental psychology principles for your office desk placement. This is a low hanging fruit, one of those things that really works and often quite easy to implement. I'm Natalia Kalin. I help people create beautiful, well-functioning office environments that support productivity and positively influence your success, well-being and prosperity. These ideas that we are going to discuss apply to any office environment, including your home office. Basically, anywhere you have a desk and uh, some surrounding space. Let's dive into it. I want to discuss seven different scenarios of desk placement. Which ones are worst, which ones are okay and how we can improve them, and which ones are the best. At the end, I will offer two bonus tips on which desk material is the most optimal and which ones to avoid and uh, the size of the desk. Here is a spoiler. This position here is best. This is a very core feng shui principle. You have a solid wall behind you, an open space in front of you, you have a view of the door and you enjoy a view from the window. As we go along, you will understand exactly why it is the best position. From experience, I know that the space often doesn't allow to achieve this position and we will discuss how we can improve other positions. So this is such an important episode if you are serious about improving your productivity, success and chances for better prosperity. And if you are enjoying this content, please give us a thumbs up. Scenario number one, desk against a wall. Most people place their desk against a wall to maximize floor space. Facing a wall all day feels constricting and tiring, and studies confirm that it drains creativity. If this is the only way you can position your desk, use that wall to hang a large picture of an open view. Looking at an ocean, meadow, or even a city skyline will open up the space and create a sense of spaciousness and freedom. Scenario number two, facing a busy wall or cluttered shelves. Having too much stuff in your field of view creates a feeling of agitation and stress. This can seriously hamper your ability to concentrate. Organizing and minimizing what's in front of you is super important. I would avoid sitting in front of a shelf because its sharp edges literally shoot sharp energy at you. Shelves tend to accumulate clutter. All this together is agitating, attention robbing and tiring. The simplest solution is don't buy a desk with shelves. If you must sit in front of a built-in shelf, use a space for a plant or two uh, to balance out the sharpness of the edges. You can also use the extra space for a few favorite vacation photos as a positive reminder of how to enjoy your money. Scenario number three, sitting with your back to a door. Sitting with your back to a door makes you feel vulnerable and on edge. In this position, you can't relax and will feel as if someone could sneak up on you at any moment. Even when you are alone in a safe environment, there is a subconscious sense of being exposed. This comes from a very primal need to protect our back. It is a survival instinct deeply ingrained in human psychology. If this is the only way you can place your desk, try putting up a mirror showing the door behind you or if you are in a cubicle, a space behind you. There are clip-on convex cubicle mirrors made for this very purpose. At home, you can incorporate a more decorative mirror into the room's overall aesthetics. Even if you uh, live alone, being able to look up and see what's behind you creates a peace of mind. Having a tall computer chair also gives a sense of safety and protection. Scenario number four, desk against a window. This picture brings us to the next most common scenario, which is sitting right in front of a window. This often also means that uh, the door is out of sight and your back is exposed. Having a window is great. Research shows that an outdoor view makes us happier and less anxious, leading to a higher levels of concentration and productivity. The view of nature, the sky, clouds, the trees, 
increase our dopamine and serotonin levels, bringing the stress levels down. But ideally, the window should be off to your side. This way, you can always see it with your peripheral vision, even as you focus up uh, on the screen in front of you. If you have a window in front, your monitor blocks your view anyway. So with the window to the side, you can experience nature much better. You sit with your back to the wall rather than being exposed and have this grand view to the side rather than looking at the wall. In this picture, the desk is just so easy to reverse. Scenario number five, back to a window. Sitting with your back to a window is also not ideal. This means dealing with glare, missing out on a view, and once again, a subconscious feeling of being exposed and vulnerable. If this is your only option, try moving your desk further away and consider placing a console cabinet between your chair and the window. A tall office chair with a solid back is also beneficial here. In this picture, it is so easy to place the desk with the wall at your back and the view to your right side. Scenario number six, slanted ceiling. If you have a slanted ceiling, avoid placing your desk against the wall that meets the downward slope. The lowered ceiling, as if it's pressing down on you, will amplify the already claustrophobic feeling of staring at the wall. You can give yourself more space by moving the desk further back into the center of the room or turn it around to face the other way. If the ceiling slopes upward behind you, that's not bad. Just make sure you have enough space to stand without hitting your head. Scenario number seven, the perfect setup. Now you understand why the ideal desk position where you have a solid wall at your back and an open space in front of you is called the power position in feng shui. It makes us feel secure, relaxed, and empowered. The door should be visible and window to your side will provide natural light and a view. If your space allows, definitely go for it. You will feel the difference. A variation of this scenario. This room has two windows and the door is at the left back side. This is the best position for this room. Bonus tip number one, desk material. According to environmental psychology studies, we feel less stressed and happier when we are exposed to natural materials. In the case of desk, seeing a wood grain does the trick. So I would definitely advise choosing a wooden desk. Veneer is fine too, as long as it looks natural. Darker or lighter wood is fine, whichever pleases you, but not too dark. You want to be able to see wood veins and patterns. Standing desks are great. I would avoid white desks. White is cold and harsh. Why use a painted desk when we can do so much better with natural wood? I would also avoid black desks. Black doesn't have energy. It will be tiring. Avoid reflective surfaces. Reflections will create stress. And I would definitely avoid metal and glass desks. They are cold and harsh. Glass desks do not hold energy. The energy is leaking through the glass, making it the worst possible material for the office desk. But luckily, they are rare. Bonus tip number two, the size of the desk. The size of your desk should be proportional to the size of your room, and actually to your size too. If the desk is too big or too small, it will seem out of place, and every time you enter the room, something will feel off. Too small desk will have you feeling uh, cramped and confined, both literally and psychologically. I hope you enjoyed this video and find the information useful. If you change the position of your desk, let us know how it works for you. And uh, please share this video with your friend or co-worker who can benefit from this information as well. As always, thank you for watching. Subscribe to my channel to be notified when new videos are coming. 
See you soon.